Let's take this opportunity to bring our guests and civil rights trial attorney Adante Pointer and trial attorney Misty Maris. Thank you both for being with me. All right, so listen, he uh, takes, we know from the first witness, he takes his wife to the hospital. She has burns. He allegedly stays there. He signs off for her to be transported to another hospital. And there's not really a big chink in his armor yet. Do you think it is one when we start hearing from law enforcement after he goes back to his home he's in the car he becomes evasive according to this witness he didn't want to exit his vehicle she puts her arm in to take the keys there's a little tussle what look does this give misty in your opinion the defendant at this point uh, first of all ashley great to see you always a pleasure uh so first of all you're absolutely right these actions after the fact are something that the prosecution is going to focus on because they're indicia of guilt. The way that he responds to the police officers. And we know that this is going to go a bit further. We know this from what we've seen in the pretrial motions, that the police are ultimately going to testify, these, these individuals who responded, about the results of the search warrant and evidence that's at odds with the story that he is telling. Items that seem to undercut his version of the facts. And so certainly right now, this is being laid out for the jury and his response to the police is certainly something they're going to take into consideration. And it's quite negative for the defense. It is, and I know the prosecution's gonna lean into those facts, but Adante, let me play devil's advocate. If he's not under arrest, does he have any obligation to get out of the car, cooperate with police? What should he do? And we may be having a difficulty, uh, Dante Pointer, if we get him back, we're going to bring him back in. But Misty, to that point, did he have any obligation? It's a bad look, but did he have to do what law enforcement was requesting of him at that point? So that's a great question. He does not because he's not detained. Once he's detained, he's Mirandized. Well, then he's going to have to abide by law enforcement commands. But that doesn't stop. The, the argument about whether or not somebody's detained and whether or not what they say in those moments and, and whether or not that is actually a statement that can come into court, right? We've seen that when somebody's not detained under the law, formally in custody, it creates evidentiary issues. That's different than what we're seeing play out in the courtroom right now. Whether or not he had an obligation to do anything is really not the point. The point is that his response to law enforcement, the way that he responds to this uh, interaction in general, is something of serious concern and shows intent and shows that there's something off with the story. And that's the way the prosecution is going to couch it. Now, to your point, Ashley, there's always a defense, right? Right. And so we'll see how that's dismantled on cross-examination to poke holes in the story and create reasonable doubt. Misty, what a great summary of the law and what's required, not required. And you're right, it's a bad look for the defendant. But here's what we're really going to want to hear when we come back.